It's the last of its kind with a traditional car name. 50 years ago, this era came to an end with a vehicle which connects progress and a tradition in its own way. The 1964 DKW F12 Roadster, the last model under the composite brand Auto Union. Thereafter, the people from Ingolstadt go in a completely new direction. A classic car which one should enjoy, already for its charming characteristics with the top down. The F12 Roadster, with its easy to use convertible top, offers open-air driving fun of a special kind. A special feature of this little roadster is the typical high-frequency sound of the two-stroke engine. I present you with the new DKW F12 Roadster from the world-famous Auto Union and wish you a safe journey always. In 1964, the Auto Union proudly presents the DKW F12 Roadster, even if the parent company stood with its back to the wall at that time. In the late 50s, sales figures collapse. The buyers move away, mainly to Wolfsburg, to the VW Beetle. Whereby the F11 and F12 is already a proper engineered car as a limousine for the lower middle class with front wheel drive. Only one thing, it no longer seems to up to date. The always slightly bluing and raspy two-stroke. With only 0.9 liters of displacement, the three-cylinder two-stroke engine delivers an impressive 45 horsepower around 10 horsepower more than then the then rival, the Volkswagen Beetle. In the Auto Union composite brand, the DKW brand represents one of the four rings. And after the war, DKW developers build on the successful history. In addition to motorcycles and later scooters, the group produced small cars and cars of the middle class. The car was actually always what was understood as a typical DKW at the auto union. It was a last position so that it targeted precisely the VW Beetle. It couldn't compete against the Wolfsburg Miracle. DKW could only dream of these quantities after the war. The Roadster wasn't made to deliver large quantities, rather an image boost for the conservatively designed DKW model range have provided the F12, also in the open variant, with a friendly, sober atmosphere, with clear instruments and sufficient space for four people. A great deal of value was placed on this in the commercials from 64. This is not just a car. This is a view of life. That's optimism with 45 horsepower. The fully retractable roof creates a completely new driving experience. You drive connected to nature and enjoy a panorama of 360 degrees. Your vacation will be more beautiful, more sunny. A true picture of a car. With the construction of convertibles, the Engelstadt engineers get proven help from a specialist, the company Bauer Body and Vehicle Construction from Stuttgart. With Bauer, the best business relations had existed since pre-war times. The DKW convertibles came from there, the Horsch special bodies, such as the Wanderer W25 Roadster and convertible. Those were good old business connections that were revived after the war. Bauer was a specialist for convertibles. It was such that with the F12, they had a frame that was stable enough. 
Roof off, it is easier with a self-supporting body. Bauer then developed the components, the convertible top linkage, completely manufactured and supplied with tarpaulin. The car was assembled, however, here in Ingolstadt. You know, this is more beautiful than I thought. Do you think we should really make it come true for us? But maybe it's too small for us. And where do we put the luggage? No ifs or buts. I have two by two seats and luggage space for four people, tailor-made for vacation. But you can only drive in summer, right? That was before. As a roadster, I am now an all-weather car for the whole year. All drivers say that and are of the same opinion. <laughs> and it doesn't talk about the price. You won't believe it, but I only cost an amazing 7,250 marks. Well then, what do you say now? Nothing, you young sprinter. Now show me what you have under the hood. In the mid-60s, the F-12 Roadster is considered as being well-motorized with 45 horsepower. The three-cylinder, two-stroke engine pulls strongly through, but requires revs. And after the war, two-stroke driving is regarded as a question of faith. After 1945, there were still convinced two-stroke drivers. First, of course, the DKW fans. This bordered almost on sectarianism, even defending the oil smell, piston ring breakage, and the like. The engine, for two-stroke fetishists, a blessing and inexpensive in maintenance and repair. It eventually leads the DKW brand into ruin. The two-stroke engine is still successful in motorsport in everyday traffic, but it is increasingly seen as an uncultured stinker with bad emission values. The two-stroke engine gets its vital oil for lubrication via a separate oil tank. And the DKW people responsible hold firmly onto the simple two-stroke engine right up to the end. Three pistons, three connecting rods, a crankshaft, only seven moving parts. An idea, a tradition with a future, the two-stroke three-cylinder engine. An engineering feat which is all the more impressive due to the low engineering input. The two-stroke engine has a fixed rotational speed. From the first turn onwards, a very thin film of lubricant spreads on all sliding surfaces to prevent wear and tear. The output, 45 to 55 horsepower tops. In 1965, and the Volkswagen Group takes the auto union with it, the DK brand. Thus, the fate of the two-stroke engine is sealed as a car drive train in Ingolstadt. Only die-hard fans still hold the two-stroke flag high. Today, an F-12 Roadster in top condition is regarded as being a rarity. Fans pay 17,000 euros or more for good examples. In 1965, Auto Union produced the last two-stroke cars under the name DKW, a new old name Audi and an acquired for Mercedes four-stroke four-cylinder bring a successful restart for the people from Ingolstadt the beginning of a success story.